Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news and transfer news. And Paul Pogba stops a Timo Werner bid for Manchester United. We'll be talking about that. Lots to talk about about this Werner deal. Lots still coming out as I even record this. There's talk about how, Man uh, how Chelsea's decisiveness from their recruitment team was the key to getting Werner. And I'll say this, I've said it many times before, Manchester United's recruitment team is nowhere near that of Chelsea's and hasn't been for a decade, which is really sad considering that Chelsea really only got invented in around 2005. But much like Man City, they... Money was pumped in, and instead of just pumping money into the manager and the players, they actually built a recruitment team behind it, which is what Man City done, which is what Liverpool have done, and they've reaped the benefits. And United still refuse to do that. United still have this recruitment team that goes up like a pyramid to people at the top who know nothing about football. That needs to change. Hopefully it is changing, because it's not from, not me as a fan or you as a fan saying that. Look at Chelsea. Look at Man City. Look at what Liverpool's recruitment over the last 15 years, um, collectively those three clubs. And it's way better than us consistently. We've had a good year, but we need to keep having that. So we'll talk about what, what Pogba's interest in, uh, in, the, in Pogba's role in the Werner deal was, but ultimately some really interesting stuff. I mean, first of all, the Standard said, uh, Evening Standard said last night that Manchester United will not rival Chelsea for Timo Werner. That's a little bit like saying Mr Bean will not rival Brad Pitt for Margot Robbie. Of course we're not. We've, we've missed the ship. We've got no chance now. But interestingly, coming out from David Ornstein this morning, um, he said that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did meet... Uh, Timo Werner in February in Berlin. Now, the context of this, you could joke and say, yeah, Ollie was on holiday having a little, and they were in a Starbucks. He had a peppermint tea. Werner had a latte. There was a little glance at each other and they went their separate ways. But apparently it's more than that. They, they did meet up and there, there was conversation about, well, there was interest from Manchester United, which is what I, you know, look, I said this, I was told this a couple of weeks ago. I spoke about it on the show. United hold an interest in Timo Werner. Let's not Let's not be unfair because we didn't get him and say we were never in for him. I think we've made a decision not to be in for him and that goes back to Agarlo at the start of the week and that's what I said last night. You know what? United coming in with a bid or, or anything now is not going to happen because as soon as Agarlo stays, that's it. No striker. No striker coming to Manchester United. But slightly annoying that we were in for Timo Werner and we decided not to do it. So where does Pogba come into this? Well, again, this is coming from, uh, from Ornstein saying that effectively Manchester United... Could not, release, could not meet the release clause of Timo Werner if they didn't sell Paul Pogba. And that is worrying, but it won't be surprising because what, what, what frustrates me about United is just please, can we just try, you know, you've got a PR expert in now. Can you just try and tell Ollie what your plan is? Because Ollie comes out with stuff and it may be misquoted and it may be, you know, I don't know what it is, but when he comes out like he did a few weeks ago and says, we're in a position to take advantage of this market, that United fans aren't stupid. There are fans out there that will think when he says that, oh, we might sign Sancho. But United already knew we wanted Sancho. So when you come out and say we're in a position to take advantage of this market, I, even I did it. We fall into this trap all the time and maybe we are stupid. But when he says we're going to take it, we're in a position to take advantage of the market, you think, well, we're already wanted Sancho and Grealish. So what, how are we going to take advantage of this situation? Oh, we're going to get more players. And that is clearly not going to be the case, is it? When he says we're going to take advantage of this market, I think he means we're going to try and sign players that we were looking at anyway. Not that we're going to go above and beyond, which we, which would have been fantastic, but how could we do that? Why would we do that? Not with these owners. I can't see us doing that. I, I still wait and hope that we're going to get proven wrong, and I keep saying this. What's going on at the moment around Werner and what we're talking about now, I still am a total confidence that we're going to get Sancho. I think if they don't do that, there's big questions to ask. But I think the priority is Sancho. I know the priority is Sancho and that's what United need to get. But they've got a lot of pressure on that deal now because they've got to get it done. So when this story comes out like it has that United had said that they can't really, they can't meet his release clause for Werner unless uh, Hogba goes, that's a bit of a worry because it's 50 million quid. And if, and, if, and if a 50 million pound spend on a striker is worth 100 million but has a release clause of 50 million is dependent on selling a midfielder, what does that say about our budget? It doesn't say a hell of a lot. So I think ultimately you can say United were interested in Werner. Oli even met Werner. But they said they can't afford Werner because they'd have to offload Pogba first, which doesn't make sense to me because the most you were going to get for Pogba was 100 million. You're going to spend half of it on Werner and I suppose the other half on Grealish. I suppose that makes sense. But does that mean there's no Grealish now with Pogba staying? I want Pogba to stay, but... 
it just shows that United, despite these ambitions, and I, I, I would say this, despite Man United's pontifications about closing gaps on teams like Real Madrid and Man City and Liverpool, ultimately, it always comes down to money. And United, despite having vast revenue, will not go above and beyond the the parameters set in by shareholders' meetings and the fact and the bottom line that Manchester United are a business, they're not a football club and they won't go gung-ho. They're not going to do what a Chelsea or a Man City or even you know other clubs have done in the past. Even Everton have done it recently where they go a little bit above and beyond in a summer. They spend a little bit more to try and close that gap and, and, and to try and fill some of the problems that they've got quicker. United... They're looking at that 60 to 70 million pound net spend every transfer window. And that suggests that if they can't offload players, you're probably only looking at Jaden Sancho. And, but as I said, when we kept Agarlo, the striker issue was going to go. So look, Pogba going, maybe we would have, maybe if Pogba was going, we might have got Werner and Grealish to go with Sancho. Is does that put I mean, what I would say is this. What would you rather have? It's just coming into my head now. Would you rather have Pogba and Sancho or would you rather Pogba goes and you've got Grealish, Sancho and Werner? That is one that I've sort of thrown on myself there that I don't know whether I can answer. Because I think this... Well, no, I'm not going to hide from it. Why, why should I hide from it? Would, would I rather have Pogba and Sancho or would I rather have Grealish, Werner and Sancho and Pogba leaves? If it's the Pogba we've had for the last three years, I would take Grealish, Werner and Sancho and turn a new page and have three positions instead of two. If it's, if it's Paul Pogba, Mr. Consistent, signs a new contract and starts playing consistently to his best, I would take Pogba and Sancho. That, to me, is the parameter. You know, if Pogba signs a long-term contract, starts playing really well and consistently, why would I remove him? But if it's the Pogba of the last three years, who's, you know, non-committal, uh, inconsistent, then I probably would say, off you go, Paul, to where you want to go. I'll get Grealish and Werner in to play with Sancho. So that, that would be my honest answer. But hopefully there is rumours that Pogba is tempted about signing a new contract. That's all I want. That's all many of us want. Um, so time to move on from Werner. And of course, the big thing is as well, and I read this this morning, the decisiveness of, um, uh, the, of Chelsea in this Werner deal was what it got, over, what got it over the line. And that is not the first time that's happened. We, I remember when United and City were after Eden Hazard, Chelsea weren't even, even in the Champions League at the time, and then they won it. They, I think they won the final, and, and Hazard went there, and they got Hazard. And they've done it time and time again. Chelsea's recruitment team, as much as whatever you think about Chelsea, their recruitment team for over a decade has been elite. Very, very good. Whatever you think about them, very good. They've constructed a very good team that supports and goes and gets players for their manager. And Manchester United... Um, need to do better in that area. I think we're improving, but we need to do better in that area. So look, time to put the Werner rumour to bed if you've not done that already. I, as soon as Agarlo signed, I knew that was it. Um, and look, I, I can't say enough. I do like Agarlo. I do like Agarlo, and I think we all like Agarlo. But what I don't like is that deal. I don't like the fact that he's staying till the middle of next season when it's a very important season for us. And what I really don't like is how Manchester United just constantly use Agarlo in every bit of promotion they can, whether it's their Insta feed, their, direct, their, 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 their Twitter feed, whatever. I find it slightly annoying because I like Agarlo's Insta feed and his Twitter feed because he's just living the dream. But United use Agarlo to try and paper the cracks of their incompetence because they weren't even looking at Agarlo on the day before the last day of the transfer window in January. They were looking at people like Josh King and Rondon and they ended up with a Galo and they've got very lucky with it. But they make out, like they do with Bruno, that it was all part of the plan. And United are very good at that at the moment and it worries me. Not because I don't mind United promoting that they've got something right because I, I, I want that. But I'm not trusting them enough to start going, yeah, high five. Because actually, I know on the last day of the transfer window, like everyone else does, we were scratching around desperately and we got Lukaku and it was desperate. Uh, not Lukaku, um, Agarlo. I'm going to come to Lukaku in a minute. Um, we would, it was desperate. Um, and United were desperate and they got lucky. So I'm not going to high five them and say, yeah, that was brilliant scouting. And I know with Bruno Fernandes as well, they messed it up last summer and they only went for him in January because Pogba and McTominay got injured. Again, a desperation signing that's worked out brilliantly like the fans predicted. So, but United will start using those two players in everything to go, oh yeah, look at what we've done. We've got Agarlo and Bruno. But the truth is, actually, you very nearly didn't and you got quite lucky with them. So what I want to see from United is a little bit more foresight. Bruno should have come in in the summer and if we wanted Agarlo, he should have come in at the start of the January transfer window. Stop scratching around at the end and start being decisive and getting deals done 
in place. Stop doing six-week deals and start getting them done in a few days, which is what Chelsea have done and what other clubs do. We need a little bit more decisiveness. And also on the striker situation, just finally, we sold Lukaku for £70 million last summer. We've still not replaced Lukaku. Whatever you want to say about Alexis Sanchez, we've not replaced Lukaku. So part of my frustration about not signing a striker this summer is based on that. We have very, very short memories as Manchester United fans and we allow the paper to be uh, laid over the crack and we pretend or, or we forget. Lukaku was our striker last season. He lost his place, but he still scored some very good goals, important goals, especially against Crystal Palace and Southampton. He kept us in the race for fourth and then we blew it in April. We sold Lukaku for 70 million, a very good deal, a very correct deal to do. Lukaku has not been replaced. We've bought in a player from China um, in Agarlo as a, a short-term loan deal that's now been extended to January. That's not a replacement for a 70 million striker who scores you 30, year, 30 goals a season. It's not. Mason Greenwood's coming through, but Mason Greenwood is a teenager who will need nurturing over the next two to three years. That's not a replacement for Lukaku. That's a young player coming through. And Agarlo is a loan player. Where is the Lukaku replacement? And again, we're not, we've, we've not done it. And where is the Lukaku money? Where is the and, and people will say, well, we spent it on Maguire, but 70 million, when you sell a striker for 70 million, that 70 million should be made available for another striker, which is why the Pogba thing's weird. Oh, we can only buy Werner if we sell Pogba. Pogba's your midfielder, Werner's a striker. Why is a why is the midfield budget being depending on why is a striker dependent on the midfield budget? And where's the Lukaku money? Why couldn't we use that? So there's always a lot of questions. But but we don't want to delve into too much. I think it's very important to scrutinise, discuss and, 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 and talk about how you feel. But the transfer window will get judged on when it's over. And I, <laughs> I said this a year ago and look where it ended up. I was there fed up when the transfer window closed and stunned by the inactivity in the midfield and in the attack. So that could happen again. But ultimately, if we get Jadon Sancho this summer, a lot of people will be happy. I don't think that's enough. I, will, I, I think minimum... Sancho and Bellingham. You get those two, you get out of this. You get out of this summer transfer window with a pat on the back and progression. If you don't get those two, I think that that there will be a, a, a look of, well, what were we doing? We always knew we wanted Sancho. Where's the taking advantage of the market? Especially when Liverpool don't look like they can afford to spend. Man City don't look like they're going to spend. Spurs don't look like they'll spend. Arsenal don't look like they'll spend much. Yeah, Chelsea will spend. They're a direct rival for us as well. So I think United need to do a little bit more. But patience will be key in relation to every other deal. The Werner deal, just a little bit confusing, but it's gone. Um, let's have a look at some of the other stuff that's going on because there's quite a lot going on today. Um, sticking with strikers, reports from Italy that United may be interested in Jimenez for 18 million because uh, Wolves might let him go for as little as 18 million. I don't know why Wolves would do that, but, um, you know, would I want Jimenez? I, I, to be honest, my appetite for a striker has gone now. I did like the idea of a Werner or a Musa Dembele or even a Jimenez, but I, I just don't have any interest in us signing a striker now because I just don't think we're going to sign a striker. I think that's very clear from what's happened with Werner and especially the stories coming out today that United held an interest in a striker that's just dis disappeared now because of, of, of lack of funds for it, I suppose. Um, we spoke about Havertz last night. Um, I spoke about how I'd seen it uh, from a German report. Actually, the Manchester Evening News have said that uh, from their own stories that uh, Havertz sees the Premier League as a viable option. So that's coming from uh, Manchester Evening News. What I would say is that, and I'll, I'll keep saying this, we're not signing Kay Havertz. Like, I mean, look, we. I, I said that last night. I've said it all week. We're not going to sign him. It's not going to happen. Um, it's not. It's not. Manchester United is not a viable option for him at all. Um, it's just stories and what, maybe that story has been fed out to try and feed positivity because we've missed out on Werner. We've seen this happen a lot. Something bad happens. There's a bad United result. The next day we're linked to Bale, you know, or Ronaldo. We've seen it for years. Um, and I think, you know, maybe that Havertz story is about getting a bit of positivity in the fan base, but we're not going to sign Havertz. And even if you didn't, even if you think we are, you, the story coming out this morning should totally put that to bed as well. If you can't buy a striker that you need because you haven't got the money unless Pogba goes, how are you going to go and buy a player that we don't actually need in Havertz for 80 million? We haven't got the money. We haven't got the money to go and do that deal. It could happen if we didn't get Sancho, but I don't want Havertz for Sancho. I want Sancho. We need that player off the right-hand side who is a, who is a winger. That's what we need. 
Um, Brandon Williams looking like he's going to get a new deal. Well deserved. And also, uh, <laughs> there's this website that everybody keeps. We've, we've mentioned it a few times as well. I think it's Todo Fiege website that I'd never even noticed till this summer but it keeps getting quoted by loads of UK outlets um, Sport Witness even even quoting it today about Thiago Almada the Argentinian who could be a replacement for um, uh, who, who could come in like they've mentioned him as potential Sancho alternative but when you check where it's coming from it's coming from this Spanish website again but it's the same Spanish website who said we were signing Dembele who was signing was signing Sauna Guest I don't even know where this website's come from. I've never even heard of it before, but everybody keeps quoting it this summer. And at some point, they're going to get something right, but they're miles off. They're miles off with everything. So I don't know. I don't know why the British press and wider press keep quoting a website that I'd never bloody heard of before. Like it's gospel. It's just weird. So, but I thought I'd mention it because a lot of people have been mentioning that one as well. Um, and yeah, I think that sort of wraps it up to, for today. So, oh, also. Champions League final, my FIFA career mode Champions League final against Juventus. If anybody wants to watch that, just for the banter or if you're interested, I'll drop you the link in the video description so that you can subscribe to that channel. That will be at half past six tonight. And then at eight o'clock tonight, I'll be live as well, normally on this show, as normal on this show. So thanks everyone for watching. Smash a like if you're new. Uh, so smash a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. I'll speak to you later.